I put you inside my bookshelf. Yes. Hey guys, welcome back to another reading vlog. Um, I don't even know where to start. First of all, you're in my bookshelf because as you can see, I moved things around basically all last week um, because I just, I moved things around in the whole apartment. I just kind of decided to make some changes and I wanted to make like the coziest little book nook of my dreams. It's by no means um, completed yet. I want to get a reading chair because I haven't, I just, I've never had a reading chair um, and I think a really kind of old style-y one, maybe like velvet or with a cushion or something would fit so nicely like right here. Um, I'll have to show you like the whole thing because I'm so excited that the bookshelves fit so nicely in this little corner where my couch is. And it makes it so cozy to sit on the couch now and like stare wistfully at the books, but yeah. I also have so many reading updates because I finished a whole bunch of books. I got a couple more started. It is also now, I think, the third day officially of the DA Halloweenathon, which is the readathon hosted by the Dark Academics Book Club, of which I am a part. So if you're taking part in that, please let me know. I thought we could do some spooky things this week and I'll tell you what I'm reading for the prompts. Um, if you don't know, all the details are in the description and there's lots more found on our Instagram page and the bingo board that we're using is all there. So I'll just leave that down below if you want to participate or come to our live show, which will be on Halloween on Mary's channel at Mary Among Stories, which I'm really excited about because we're all dressing up um, and we hope you do too. So also on that note, if you guys have any like ideas of maybe either bookish things or not bookish related things that I could dress up as or have the costume of for the live show, I'm welcoming any ideas right now because I really have no clue what or who to be. So please comment your ideas because I really don't know. So in terms of reading updates, oh my gosh, I have so many. I finished The Doll Factory, which I think was about the last book I was talking about. Um, I loved it. I gave it four stars. It was so creepy. It like mastered that haunting, suspenseful, creeping, crawling sense of dread that just builds and builds throughout a book and you're so nervous to see what's gonna happen and you always feel this impending sense of doom throughout the whole time you're listening to it and it was so good. I loved it. I loved everything that was explored and I think there were so many connecting quadrants and little lines throughout the book through people and through art and strange Victorian morbidity and it was just really really good and I gave it four stars. So for Phantom of the Opera, guys I'm, a, I'm actually almost done. I'm on page 324. Um, it's just so good. I've now entered kind of the last act, the last big scene in the book. It's just like so good. I don't even know what else to say about it and I am just loving it. I don't want it to end and um, I have started collecting like editions of it now because I think I said in an Instagram post or something that like seeing all of the different editions that you guys are reading for the book club it's just so crazy how many different covers and iterations and copies of it there are in the world and it introduced me to some like really beautiful um, publications of my favorite story so I of course had to get a couple more I will show you them when they arrive and I'm just really, really 
happy about that. So that's Phantom. I'll probably be back a bit later to yell at you about some favorite quotes or scenes or something, but um, that is that. I'm almost, I'm almost, almost done. For the readathon, I decided to start with a book for the prompt of reading something with supernatural themes. So I've decided to go with Sheets by Brenna Thumler. Um, this is a graphic novel about a ghost <laughs> and a girl who uh, works at a laundromat. She basically has to run it herself because um, her mother recently passed away and her dad is just very much grieving and not really able to function and to run the laundromat. So Marjorie um, takes it upon herself to kind of run her family business and no one warned me how sad this book is, or at least right now, I'm currently 102 pages in. Um, no one, I just didn't know how sad this book was or how sad it starts off. I hope it picks up and gets a bit happier because um, it's really bringing me down, but I know hopefully it's just gonna turn into a very wholesome, fun, friendship book. Um, but right now it's, it's really not, it's just sad times for everyone involved and me included. So that is the book though that I'm currently reading for the readathon as well as of course finishing up Phantom. So that's what we've got going. I also started another book. I don't know if I can count this for any of our prompts, but I'm gonna find out because I'm loving it. I started Kiki's Delivery Service. So good. Didn't really know it was a book. Found out it was a book. Got the book. Listening to the book. Loving the book. It's so good. It's so cute. It's a shorter one and it's just so wholesome, beautiful. It's so great too because I'm like imagining it in the kind of colors and landscapes and um, art style of the movie, I guess, even though I haven't seen the movie, but it's just really good. It's what I wanted. It's so sweet and I'm loving it. So that's the audiobook I'm currently listening to. Anyway, I think that's everything I'm currently reading. Maybe I'll get back to you on that, but I really want to show you like this little book corner. All right, so this is what it currently looks like. I moved all my books. It was a very um, long process of taking them all down and then moving them all here in the bookshelves, but thankfully I had a lot of help. Um, and then the carpet is here and the couch is here. It's really, really cozy in that corner and just, it's so nice just like sitting here and <laughs> staring at the books. I want to put a chair, I think like right here. Um, and then I can just kind of move it around in this little cozy corner. I also kind of wanted to get some more lights or something. Um, I don't know, but it's really nice here.
Hey guys, welcome to Tuesday. It's almost noon, but I'm gonna make some like breakfast lunch because I had one of the muffins, the apple muffins that I made, um, since I'm still trying to figure out what to do with the apples and they turned out so good. They are the best muffins that I've ever made. Um, and they taste, uh, they're just so good. Anyway, but I think I'm gonna make a smoothie bowl right now because I have a lot of fruit that I need to use up and yeah, let's do it. Got the coffee. Oh, got the smoothie. We're ready to go. I also found these. Um, what do you call them? I wear straps. <laughs> I've wanted a pair of these for like so long, ever since I was little. Basically, I remember my second grade teacher. She was a very elderly woman. She had um, a pair of these that she would always take on and put off. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. So finally attach them to these ones. These are my reading ones, so I make my eyes look quite big, but yes. Let's talk about it. I just love this little corner so much. I think this could be like a new very, very cozy filming spot because now I can just sit on a couch and talk and be cozy, but I have a few things to talk about book-wise. The first is this guy. As you saw, I was reading a little bit of it last night and I finished it. Oh god, I finished it. I'm not okay. I don't know why. I've cried every time, every single time I finish this book, even though I've arrived at the end of this book at least six times, and then I just break down and cry as if I don't know what happens. It's a bit ridiculous. Regardless, I am done. Here's the final finished product. Um, I'm so sad it's over, like this was the time of my life, <laughs> it always is when I reread it. I have so many things to say about it, so I don't even know where to start. Um, I love the final closing parts of this book, especially the epilogue, it's so fascinating. Um, if you're reading this and you get to the epilogue, it's kind of just, it's wonderful, basically. Um, and then like, his invitation to the reader to go to Paris and to explore the opera house, it just always like makes me want to go there so badly. I remember I went through this huge phase, especially after I read Phantom again, when I think I was around 11 or 12, and I would like draw up these elaborate plans to go to Paris and all these kind of tour guides and itineraries and all this ridiculous stuff that has never happened, but it was like a very big phase. Um, I guess it wasn't really a phase because still is. Regardless, a little bit before the epilogue, I love the part where Nadir and Raoul are in the torture chamber and everything goes on at Eric's lakeside retreat. It's just so good. Let me find maybe like a few closing quotes that I can leave you with for now. Maybe like one of the last things I'll say right now is just like this quote again from Christine who's talking just about the opera house in general and she just like it's so nice. She calls it a modern tower of Babel. This land of intrigue where people sang in all languages and loved in all dialects. I just love it so much as well as like the closing scenes after Christine's um, disappearance from the stage, like her final disappearance from the stage when Nadir and Raoul like descend. So many different like bowels and layers and stairs and weird places to go underneath the opera house. I've never seen like a gothic book whose architecture and whose exploration of architecture like not necessarily like takes it this far but explores it in such a unique different 
very particular specific way. It's very difficult for me to like conceptualize <laughs> like space and buildings in my head. Definitely not very spatially inclined, shall we say. So much more than five stars. Like it's just, it's my favorite book. It's my favorite book of all time. And um, I'm so sad it's over because I wish it could basically never end. But I also am very excited because I know there is kind of a graphic novel, Phantom of the Opera being released, I believe November, Third. So I finished our first read for the Dark Academics Book Club and I have We Have Always Lived in the Castle over there on the shelf. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get the audiobook and if not, like I did just read it um, in the summer so it's very fresh in my mind but I am reading a few more books. I think I'm currently like reading four more books right now or something but the one that I'm gonna be reading I think this afternoon focus on mostly is Sheets, which I talked about a little bit yesterday. If I didn't really explain this properly, it is about the friendship between Marjorie and Wendell, who is a ghost, and he comes into her world and they meet at her laundry shop, laundromat, and yeah, it's just about that basically. But I am a little over 100 pages through, it's a very quick, easy read, and they are just meeting now for the first time, so I'm not really sure how this book is going to end or where it's going to go. I hope it goes somewhere happy because it's really sad right now, but that is Sheets. If I manage to finish Sheets and then I kind of have some more time um, to throw in another book for the readathon, I was kind of debating between Bluettes by Maggie Nelson or this one. This one's perfect for the readathon and for Halloween, but it's The Castle of Otranto by Horace Walpole, and I've been meaning to read this book for ages, another gothic spooky book, so I might throw this one on if I have time. We're just gonna have to see, but I really hope it happens because I really, really want to read this. In terms of audiobooks, I currently got two on the go. I was kind of hoping to fulfill the prompt to read by candlelight with like a spooky book and I was meaning to have that one be The Doll Factory but I finished that already so I decided to give a go to Sharp Objects. This is quite I think a popular really really spooky thriller. I don't typically like thrillers or really read them not because I don't want to be spooked but like they just a lot of them seem very similar to me and they end up getting quite boring and pointless, but Sharp Objects sounded really scary, actually, and it kind of is. It's not really spooking me yet. I hope it does, but we're following this reporter named Camille and she's from Chicago, but she gets an assignment from her editor to head back to Missouri to a little, little town, which was basically her hometown where she grew up and she hates it there. But the kind of journalist assignment is to write upon these two um, young girls who have been found murdered in the little town. So she gets there and she's staying with her mother She's quite a creepy lady. I think there's a lot going on with her mother and her stepsister as well as her stepfather. A lot of really, really unsettling, disgusting, creepy little nooks and crannies in like this very small town. I think that's all I want to say because I think it's good if you go into it not really knowing a lot. I'm probably going to be finishing um, this one pretty soon because I tend to be able to listen to like thrillers and mysteries quite quickly. Um, so that is that one. And then I also started Strange Fiction by H.G. Wells, which is a collection of his short stories all catered and centering around spooky, creepy sci-fi things. I'm actually not loving it. What is this bird doing? I'm not super into it. Like, I don't know. I don't always get along with H.G. Wells <laughs> novels, but the one exception seems to be The Island of Dr. Moreau, which is one of my favorite works of his. It's not that I find them boring because they're not by any means boring, but they're just not very interesting or compelling to me and these short stories i don't really like short story collections either but i wanted to have like another kind of classic in here so i thought strange fiction would kind of suit the halloweenathon but um i'm not hating it but i'm not loving it so that is that i just want to wear pajamas <laughs> we've got um t-rex 
Christmas. They're not even normal T-Rex. They are T-Rexes with Santa Claus hats. Um, so T-Rex, Santa, fuzzy socks. Into some very, very cozy um, printed pants and a giant cardigan. It's called fashion. little update on sheets there's only about 30 pages left and it's still so sad so sad um it's making me so sad i kind of thought this book was going to be more wholesome happy than like sad lo-fi <laughs> I might finish it up tonight or tomorrow, so that'll be another book down for the readathon. And then I think I um I either want to start the Castle of Otranto. Um, what else did I say? Bluettes or the Bloody Chamber. Um, I don't know which one yet, but yeah. morning it is wednesday today um i've been having the slowest morning of my life i did finish two books since i last talked to you we're doing really well with this readathon apparently so i'm gonna go get them i think i'm gonna make a nice cup of tea and yeah i think i'm shy yeah are so good. I love having them with tea as well. Um, <laughs> ginger snaps are one, if not like my favorite kind of cookie, but it's been so hard to find ginger snaps that don't have animal products in them. And this brand, which I believe remains Sweden. Um, oh goodness. Someone please tell me how to say that correctly. But this brand has been basically one of the only ones I've been able to find um that don't have animal products in them and they are so good they come in like vanilla and orange and lemon and they are perfect they are so good so very happy about this find. okay i am alive right so yeah i did finish two books one this morning, another one last night, and I'm actually about to finish up Sharp Objects, I think today, before the end of today too, so that's exciting. This readathon is going really well, albeit most of these are audiobooks, but that's okay. So I almost fell asleep listening to this one last night, but I ended up finishing it before going to bed, and that is Strange Fiction by H.G. Wells, the collection of short stories. I ended up giving this three stars. There were actually a few short stories in here that I really, really enjoyed, namely The Strange Orchid, which is about this guy who collects orchids, the flowers, and one day he goes to an auction to get some that are flowers like out of this dead orchid collector's collection and stuff goes really wrong from there so that one was really good and there were a couple others that i really enjoyed but on the whole like it wasn't anything that i was like wow this is amazing so i just ended up giving it three stars so that is another hg wells book that i can kind of tick off of my hg wells list which I didn't have, but you know. This morning, I also finished up Sheets by Brenna Thumler, the graphic novel. Um, <laughs> this was like so sad for about 80%, eight, maybe 85% of this book was just so sad. Um, I have to say, I wasn't a big fan of the ending for a number of reasons. I thought it was really rushed and everything like suddenly solved itself out of nowhere. All of Marjorie's problems and Wendell's problems just kind of vanished into thin air. 
and went away without like a satisfactory or realistic explanation, which was a bit frustrating. So the ending definitely felt a bit rushed in that respect. But honestly, on the whole, I still gave it four stars because it. I loved the art style. I loved the spookiness. I loved the town that this was in because it was kind of like a very autumn Halloween um, by the lake, I think it is, town. And it was just really nice to see. And of course I enjoyed their friendship and everything like that. So that is Sheets and I think I was using this as the prompt for a book with supernatural themes for the readathon. And then I guess Strange Fiction is just kind of an extra book because it didn't really fulfill any of the prompts, but yeah. As for Sharp Objects, I'm honestly not really enjoying it very much. I'm gonna get to the end before I say any thoughts because um, thrillers always change very quickly, so maybe I'll end up enjoying it, but as of right now, it's not, I'm not loving it. But I decided to actually end up throwing the Castle of Otranto on th this readathon list of reads. So I think I'm going to start this today. I don't know if there's any hope of me finishing it um, before the month ends, but we will try and see. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about this, honestly, just more gothic in my life makes me very happy. On the topic of the readathon, how's it going for you guys? Let me know what you're reading. Um, let me know what you've read and just how it's going for you. What fun Halloween things are you doing? I know our prompts are to like make yourself something sweet and watch a spooky book to movie adaptation and stuff like that. On the topic of the live show and costumes and stuff, I was really thinking about it this morning and then I was kind of going through my closet and I was like, wait, what if I make like a whole video about bookish Halloween character costumes? So now I've kind of got this idea in my head and I really, really want to do it. So please, if you have any suggestions, um, let me know for like bookish characters you would like to see as Halloween costumes. Of course, I'm kind of only working with what I have in my closet, but I would still love to try it out. I have a couple I know I can do for sure, maybe like three. So. If you have any ideas, please leave them down below. Oh, very exciting. Um, little update on the book Nook transformation. Um, I think I'm going to be going out tomorrow with my mom and I'm hoping to go to like a secondhand furniture store and hopefully hunt down the Victorian reading chair of my dreams. So I'm very excited to take you guys along with me to this furniture store. I love going like antique store treasure hunting and furniture store and just any secondhand thrift treasure hunt uh, times. So pretty excited for tomorrow. I hope I find a cute, cool, comfortable chair. And then I would love to like stick it right here and kind of decorate the space more. I also am looking to get some frames for some prints that I have. Oh, on the topic of that, I think I am going to slice um, a picture and a design out of sheets because let me show you there's this one I really really love it's of Wendell this one this one right here um, it's like him walking and like he's very sad but it has some really nice changing trees and I really like this one it's a little bit smaller but it's this one I think it's so nice anyway so I might take those out of here and then maybe hang them all on this one this wall right here so and I have a few other little prints and stuff I would love to get frames for rather than just stick on the wall so those are my plans for tomorrow I'm very excited I feel like the only article of clothing that I get really excited about now since like quarantine and stuff is putting on different pairs of socks this morning it's these really weird oh oh that was my that was my toes from ballet days <laughs> but um I also can't remember the last time I've worn jeans uh, I don't think I've worn jeans for like a year. Anyway, um, let's go get some furniture. So the little thrifting escapade actually went quite well because I looked at a whole bunch of chairs. There was this really cool green velvet one. It had like this leaf detailing in wood cut out, but it was a little bit too small. And then there was kind of this like gold yellowy one, but it was kind of in not the greatest condition. The first place I also went to, of course, had to have 
a book section, which meant that I had to go into the book section and look at the books. And when the deal was like five books for a dollar, how, how, how could I not, you know? Um, it was actually very nice. My brother ended up getting them for me. So I will have a little book haul to show you. And then I literally walked right into the next thrift store, saw this chair and lost my mind. I bought the chair. Did you like the chair? I do. Yeah. <laughs> So yes, as you can see, I got the chair. I found a chair. I am literally so happy about it. I love him. He is beautiful, very big. I'm just, I'm, I'm so in love with this. This is like the chair of my dreams. I literally went in and it was just there. And now he is in my little reading nook. I don't know if I'm gonna keep the chair here because it's kind of right at this corner where this bookshelf starts and then it goes around in a little nook like that. But um, it is quite easy to move, so that's good. I can kind of put it wherever I want. I don't know if I'm gonna keep the couch here. You're like sitting on the couch um, because it could also fit really nicely in that corner, but I guess we shall see. Okay, so this is what he looks like. On camera, it looks a bit like kind of more red and beigey than it actually is. I was kind of convinced it was like a silvery gray um, kind of velvet, but I'm just so in love. It has like little details, a little, uh, what is this? It's a flower. <laughs> and some like little cutout moons on the side. And I'm just honestly obsessed with it like I can't believe um, I found him there are a few little things I definitely need to clean I would like in general to just clean it up a little bit as it is but there's a couple stains like on the back side somewhere I think this one was just when it hit the door coming in so I'm gonna have to just probably take those off I'm not really sure what to use but I think I'm gonna start off with like my mom recommended dish soap and some warm water. So that's what we're gonna try, but I'm so obsessed with this, oh my gosh. So he's currently sitting right there. I think I would like to move this bookshelf. It kind of just has like tea and then random um, schoolwork in it. And I don't like really need it there, although it is a nice little place to put like a drink. But I think I am gonna move the bookshelf just cause it's kind of a little bit too crowded and then clean this table up. <laughs> And then I think we have a certified <laughs> nook of books. I'm just so happy. It fits me perfectly. I love how I can sit cross-legged because that's like my favorite way to sit. They had like the matching couch to match the chair and I was so in love with the couch as well. But I was like, Emma, you really do not have a big apartment. It ain't gonna fit. So I left it there. I'm really glad that I finally got myself a nice reading chair. It's very old. Um, it is still quite comfortable and I really do like it. It suits me quite well, I think. I would love to know when exactly this was made. My mom thought like the 1980s, my dad thought the 1950s, and my grandma thought the 40s, and I just don't know. So um, if I have any chair connoisseurs in the comments, please uh, leave your wisdom there as well as like the best way to like clean it or care for it if anyone knows. I also have some book mail to show you which is just insane and like I don't think I will ever stop just feeling so like it just I can't comprehend it and it's just so kind every single time and I just anyway so I have that to show you and then I did pick up a few books at the thrift store. I think yeah I picked up five so I will show you those as well. All right, I think I'm gonna try to clean a little bit of the chair now and just see how it goes. I'm gonna do like a small section. So it is a little bit later, but I almost forgot to show you guys all the books I got. So let me do that really quickly and then just end this huge week of reading. I have read six, almost seven books this week. I finished almost seven books this week. This readathon is really <laughs> going well. So anyway, let me show you what I got at the thrift store first. Yeah. 
Okay. Honestly, they didn't have that great of a selection. That also meant there weren't a lot of classics, which was quite surprising to me. However, one of the classics that I did end up finding is King Henry VIII by Shakespeare. This is in the very big Arden Shakespeare edition. I have not yet read King Henry VIII, nor have I read like very many of Shakespeare's histories in general. So this one comes with quite a sizable introduction. It's split with so many notes on the actual text of the play as well, which is nice. So that is the first one I got. Uh, I'm gonna have to now expand my little Shakespeare corner and make some room for this, but that is King Henry VIII. I also found this young adult fantasy that I had never heard of, but it sounds quite interesting and it had sprayed edges, which really um, drew me in. Anyway, that book is The Kingdom of Little Wounds by Suzanne Kokel. I'd never heard of this before, but uh, the premise sounded quite intriguing because a lot of young adult fantasy tends to focus on either like the monarchs or protagonists who are in quite high positions of power. Whereas in The Kingdom of Little Wounds, it sounds like we're following um, a seamstress and a nursemaid. It's the eve of Princess Sophia's wedding and a darkness creeps through the palace halls. A mysterious illness plagues the royal family, threatening the lives of the throne's heirs, and a courtier's wolfish hunger for the king's favor sets a devious plot in motion. So it basically follows a nursemaid and a seamstress who, I don't know if they both work for the princess, but I believe it basically follows them throughout these plots and everything that goes wrong within the kingdom and stuff like that. So looks like it's gonna be interesting. I hope it's a good one. This next book I had heard of and I'm quite happy to have it. And that is The Painted Girls by Kathy Marie Buchanan. This is once again, a historical fiction and it reminded me so much of The Doll Factory in kind of little bits and pieces that the synopsis suggested. So it's 1878 and following their father's sudden death, two sisters find their lives upended. With few options for work, Marie is dispatched to the Paris Opera, where she will be trained to enter the famous ballet. A big part of this though, and one that I was really, really interested in, is that it features Degas, the very famous painter, because um, I think Marie, yeah, Marie starts to kind of model for him. Uh, in his studio where he paints a lot of ballet girls, so very interested in this. Also by a Canadian author, we love to see it, so that is The Painted Girls. Next, I found a historical fiction that I had heard of, and that is Pharaoh by Wilbur Smith. I know nothing about this plot except that it is an ancient Egyptian story. So I've never read Wilbur Smith. I know he's really, really famous, but I thought I would give this one a go. And finally, I thought this last uh, book would be a really good choice because I know I have it coming in on audiobook in a long time. We have a long time to wait, but now I also have the physical copy alongside it. And that is Red Rising by Pierce Brown. I haven't heard too much about it, but what I have heard is definitely a lot of mixed reviews. I know people I believe are divided into casts according to color and we're following a man called Darrow who is a red so that's all I know not sure if I'm gonna love it but we're gonna find out I don't know why I vaguely thought this had something to do with dragons because I don't think it does and that is very disappointing but that is the last one that I got at the thrift store so all right and finally I have a very kind package to open so I'm gonna see if there's a note I think there is because I like peeked inside a little bit and I know what one of them was. I'm sorry, I got too excited, but I didn't read the note. Okay, okay. Ooh, okay. I was surprised to find this on your list. This was part of our curriculum in the Philippines and when I moved back to the US for good, I carried this with me. You are amazing and your channel makes me happy. Thank you so much from Crystal. Thank you, you're amazing. Oh my gosh, I don't know. Okay, let's see what this one is first. I didn't look at this one, I don't think, no. Yes. <laughs> I've been meaning to read this for so long. This is Touch Me Not by Jose Rizal, and I'm just so excited. I've heard so much about this, but like, I've just heard so many good things, but I don't know what the synopsis is about. So on the back, it says, it's the novel that sparked the Philippine revolution. It has become widely known as the great novel of the Philippines, a passionate love story set against the ugly political backdrop of repression, torture, and murder. The Noli, as it is called in the Philippines, was the first major artistic manifestation of Asian resistance to European colonialism. And this author became a guiding conscious and martyr for the revolution that would subsequently rise up in the Spanish 
Spanish province. I am so excited to get into this. Thank you so much for sending this my way. I am beyond excited to have this in my hands. Um, this is the really nice penguin edition and it smells amazing. It's also very floppy. We love a floppy book. Wow, okay. So there is also something else in here. Wait, let me put this down. Oh my gosh, I love that I can rest books on this chair as well. Okay, let's see if there's another now. I know what this one is, I think. I'm like 100% sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh. All that is gold does not glitter. Not all those who wander are lost. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you'll enjoy this. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Yeah, oh my gosh. My heart, okay. It is the Fellowship of the Ring. Yes. So this one I have read, but I didn't actually own it. And I really wanted to own it because I really wanted to read it again very, very soon. Um, Lucy, if you are watching this from Crescent Pages, I know you are probably. I now have to send you a picture of this. Um, basically, every time I talk to Lucy and just interact with her or think of her in my mind, I just immediately want to pick up The Lord of the Rings. So... Thank you so much, Crystal, for sending this my way. Um, unbelievably happy. I love this edition as well. It is stunning. So, it smells amazing. This is also a very perfect autumn read, and I'm so, so excited. I've actually only read The Hobbit and The Fellowship, so I have not completed um, the series by any means. I just, I really, it is, it's like such a source of comfort and joy and inspiration. Um, and I just, I'm so excited to get into this. So thank you. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. This was incredibly kind of you. All right, so that also brings us to the end of this week, which means I will now give you my final reading update. So I finished Kiki's delivery service. I didn't really talk much about it this week, but I loved it. I loved it so much. I gave it four stars. I would also love to own that book because it was so wholesome. If you're looking for something to cheer you up, highly recommend. I finished that one. I finished Sharp Objects. I gave that three stars honestly might bump up that rating because I've been thinking about it a little bit, but I'm definitely going to have so much more to say about it in my wrap up. And I also finished another book called Why Buddhism is True by Robert Wright. I've been working on that one for a bit, but I finally got that one done this week. That was a nonfiction that um, I also loved four stars. I'm also right now currently a little bit through chapter two of The Castle of Otranto. I'm loving it. It's amazing. I knew I would love it, but it's just another great gothic novel and a storm is actually like rolling in right now as I'm talking. So this is amazing. Perfect timing. But I'm absolutely adoring this. So um, I think I'm going to get this finished for the readathon as well. I'm also in the middle of This Is How You Lose the Time War, which is a, oh gosh, I don't even know what's happening in it to be very honest with you, but I'm loving it. Like the writing is exquisite, beautiful writing. I'm in love with it. So really loving that one. Of course, earlier this week, I finished The Phantom of the Opera. And did I finish something else? I think there was something else. I don't know. I'll put it here if there was. But I think right now I'm going to go have to close at least some of the windows because we're supposed to get like a huge storm with lots of rain. So, so I'm going to go. This has been a long vlog. <laughs> I might split next week's into two parts because I have a lot to say about what I'm reading particularly the castle. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. If you are participating in the readathon, like I said, let me know how it's going for you. I hope it's going well. I had a great week, honestly. Um, it was so fun. I'm so glad I found my chair. So I'll see you very soon. I hope you are keeping well. Ciao.